was a foggy autumn day in London, 150 years ago, and Helen could only see a few grey shapes through her bedroom window. But then she heard a noise somewhere above her and went to find her brother. He was reading about 16th century kings and queens. <coughs> I heard something upstairs, Robert. Let's explore the top rooms, she said. All right, Robert answered and closed his book. <coughs> Come on. The children almost never went into the top rooms. They were dark and cold places. There were no lights or fires, no rugs on the floor, and no chairs to sit on. In the first two rooms, they only found muscles was in the third room, an enormous broken mirror stood next to a bookcase. In one corner there was an old violin, a chest set, a long, thin red board with wheels on it, and something else that was small, flat, and gray. Robert picks it up. Have you ever seen these things before? He asked Helen. Never. She said, There were no books in the bookcase, just a slow old spider and two small pieces of paper. Helen took them to the window where it was easier to read the writing. The writing. Look at this, she whispered. It says, no, meet me, the future. Suddenly, there was another sound behind Helen. She turned around and saw a strange boy in the broken mirror. He was trying to say something, but he but he was like the glass in the mirror were broken into small pieces. Then the strange gray object in Robert's hand began to move a little. Robert threw it to Helen, and the moment her fingers touched it, the boy from the mirror jumped into the room. Hi. You got my message. Great. Pleased to meet you, he said. Helen was too surprised to speak, but her brother wasn't. Excuse me, he said. Have you come to help us? I've got some difficult homework. What do you know about 16th century kings and queens? Nothing, the boy said. But in 150 years, you can find out about everything really quickly on a computer. A glass screen that's full of lights and sound. You can watch moving pictures on it, listen to and read information. Do puzzles, draw pictures called cartoons, and play learning games on it too. How do you know? Helen said. Because I'm from the future, that's where and when I live, the boy answered. I often travel in time. I've come back from my skateboard. I forgot to take it home. Your what? Helen asked. My skateboard. There it is. Great. It looks okay. What's in it for? Robert asked. Do you use it for carrying things? Yes. Me. The boy laughed. You stand and ride on it. It's fun. Let me try, said Helen. She stood on the skateboard and Robert pushed her across the floor. It doesn't go very fast. It does when you go down a hill. The boy laughed. What else is different than a future? Helen asked. Well, when I want to write something, I touch letters and numbers. You're too poor to have a pen for writing letters on invitation, Robert said. Here, have one of mine. Thanks. A few children still use pens in the future, the boy said. But millions send several messages each day to their friends on small machines that they keep in their pockets. They talk to their friends on them too. He looks at Helen. You're holding one actually? 
this Helen said yes it's called a fawn the boy said I came back from that too we have to walk on, on horses to talk our friends Helen said some children ride horses in my time, but lots more ride bicycles or travel in cars, metal machines with engines and wheels, like trains, Robert said. I read about those. That's right, but much smaller. And when people are ill, asked Helen, who was thinking so hard about all this amazing information, she was beginning to get a headache. In the 21st century, ambulances will drive them to the hospitals, where amazing cameras can see inside their bodies. Buses and taxis will take businessmen and women to work in skyscrapers too. Skyscrapers, Helen asked, Buildings, that are so tall, they sometimes touch the clouds, the boy answered. And places called airports will be full of flying machines to take hundreds of passengers to any country in the world. Next, you're going to say the people will be able to fly to the moon. Robert laughed. That's right, the boy said. Brave people called astronauts who fly around the Earth or visit other planets in rockets that fly 500 kilometers through space every minute. I think I prefer finding out the past, Sir Robert said. Well, you can do that too if you want. The boy smiled, took his skateboard and phone and disappeared back into the mirror interesting but he knew nothing about history let's meet someone from the past after lunch robert said and left the room helen smiled and looks at the future boy's message again flying machines she thought where's my favorite drawing pencil